Hello, my name's Anne Hendon John. I'm head teacher of uh, the Polygon School in Southampton. The Polygon is a specialist school for boys and young men with education, health and care plans for social, emotional and behavioural difficulties. We have 70 students on roll and the school is always oversubscribed. What made you decide to sign up to do your Arts Mark journey the first time? Oh gosh. Um, as a, an art teacher myself, I knew how important it was for children to have a variety of experiences around creativity. And at the time, the school had lots and lots of good um, experiences going on for the young people, but no formal recognition of it. So for the first time, I actually did the statement of intent with the school secretary and the both of us sat down together and said let's try and capture all of the things that we know the school is doing to see if we can hit the criteria for this. Um, I just knew it would be a good thing to infuse um, young people and the staff that they could get involved in something that would show the school to be the brilliant place that it is. Following the success of Polygon School being awarded a gold arts mark, you've decided to re-register the school. What has made been the driving force behind your decision to go on another journey? Because we always ask that question, even better if. What would make us even better? And actually, going for the platinum would be the absolute pinnacle of um, capturing not just what we do in the school, but all of the wider uh, things that happen to us, uh, happen as a school to us uh, in the local community. And the fact that we are part of Southampton Cooperative Learning Trust. And I became aware that some of the schools in our trust haven't yet had the experience of an Arts Mark journey. And I know there's some wonderful work happening in those schools and it'd be great for them to be able to capture um, for themselves an accreditation for something that they are doing naturally. So, yeah, going on the the next art, our art smart journey was a way of incentivizing the children in a way. You know, we've got gold, but can we be even better if we go for the platinum? What will that look like? What sort of things can we we be doing? Um, and for us at school, it is, this isn't just about my excellent art teacher, it's about all of the work that all different departments do that capture the creative ways that children can be taught here. And both twice now you've mentioned how important arts mark is to the young people in the school as well, so mm. like they have a real ownership of it. It's, uh, but it's also, it's, it's not just the accreditation and the fact that they're going away and going home with a certificate that says, look what, how well I've done. Um, because of a lot of the things we do, it's involving the young people in the design of what is it that we are going to do together as part of this project? How are we, for example, going to create a piece of work on the school wall We've got 70 metres of blank canvas. What sort of things do we want to capture in there? What story do we want to tell? And so the young people themselves are absolutely invested in, I want this piece of my world to be captured in there. Um, and doing ArtsMark's journey allows you to create lots and lots of projects like that. Um, there's something that the school is doing in the CDT department now with with my lovely CDT teacher on with Green Influencers and a group of young people who have self-selected, they've been told this is what the project might be about, who's interested, and they've chosen to take on that Green Influencer project and hopefully they're going to learn a little bit more about hardware on computers and what needs to happen and how they can be configured and so on. So there is just the fact that young people can say, can I design this part of my curriculum? Can I really be in control of what I am now learning? Which sort of turns the traditional education on its head. What is it that you want to know about? What is it that you want to learn about? 
let's build that into our timetable and do something with it. That's amazing. You talked a couple of times as well about the aspiration to continue to move and push and stretch your school community and you've used the word community mm. and I'd be really interested to know a little bit about um, how you are working with that perceived community and who is that community because I think a lot of schools really <laughs> struggle particularly when they want to stretch themselves into the higher levels of arts mark with what does community look like so what does community look like for Polygon School for Anne Hend and John and your staff and students and ha what are the sort of aspirations? Okay, so one of the things I always say to parents and carers when they come to have a look around the school is that if they choose this school for their child, they're also choosing this school for themselves because it's a partnership and the five years that that young person is with us means that we actually can't do our job well unless you've got the support of whoever is the significant others in that child's life. So they're choosing the school for themselves as well as for the child because I'm going to expect them to contribute. I'm going to expect them to do their best to get their child to school on time in the right uniform, having been to sleep and, and so on. I know it's not always easy for some of our um, young people and their families. Uh, and when we do activities such as um, we have a, an event at school, I'm going to expect them to do their best to come and participate. And if it's a samba band out on the playground, I'm going to expect them to get hold of the cowbells and have a go themselves. <laughs> because actually this is all about we as a family, we as a community, it's not just my staff and some of their children and, and their extended others. Um, being in the school, it's about my children's families and their extended significant others coming in and making a contribution. That's sometimes really, really hard for some of our families who perhaps not had a good experience of education themselves when they were young. So, um, yeah, by community, I mean everybody connected to this school and, you know, stick around long enough and we'll find something for you <laughs> to do to contribute into the school. We have a wonderful, yeah, we have a wonderful um, Friends of Polygon School Association and that was developed in 2006 by a couple of parents who wanted to contribute to the school but knew governance and being on the governing body was, was too challenging. So with the help of Southampton Voluntary Services we wrote um, a constitution and we now have a proper bank account with accounts and a, a secretary and a treasurer and a chairperson and all of those people are members of the community that are connected to the school but actually not employed here for example um, and so yes but people during lockdown we were approached by quite a few lovely people who have said what can i do to help your school community they are now part of the friends of polygon school committee so when we have an event or we're doing something um, that needs sensible pairs of hands and people to lift tables and put up flags and hang bone thing and take it all down afterwards and so on there is a nice group of people that we can pull on who are committed to trying to make things as best as they can be for the young people in the school. So by community, I mean anybody who steps foot through this door. <laughs> Did being on an arts mark journey have any influence on how you planned your great escape day? Thinking about how that might feed into um, <laughs> your arts mark either statement so, of commitment or statement of impact so, further down the line um, our great escape was a whole three weeks so um, we knew when we came back from lockdown even though the school had been opened all the way through lockdown and we had a restricted number of children coming into school daily we knew that they'd missed out on so much more and so a traditional delivery of our curriculum had to be changed so much 
So our Great Escape Weeks were designed to get the children out and about in the community as much as we possibly could and doing things creatively. And yes, being on an arts mark journey influenced an awful lot of that because you know, it was things like if you're going onto the beach, can you do a sand drawing while you're there? We photographed that. When you're on the beach, do you think you could find pebbles that could stand on top of each other and you can make yourself a pebble sculpture? Things, things like that were just a bit of fun, really. So, um, the Great Escape, we are going to do it again this year, um, mainly because although the staff, there is a massive uh, health and safety issue around taking children out into the community, and particularly when you've got neurodiverse children who don't always follow instructions immediately and can um, be difficult to manage in a community setting. So yes, everything is risk assessed carefully and everything goes through Hampshire Evolve system. And the staff therefore have to plan carefully who they're going to take, what will the experience be, what will their, what their learning outcomes from this activity. Um, and how can it be delivered in a way that the, it's going to be fun and accessible for the children and so very different from their normal within school experience. Um, so lots of planning has to happen beforehand. There's a budget that needs to be attached to all of this because obviously it costs money to take children. Even if you're only walking to the local park, there is a you know, what do we need to do? Do we have to staff it more than we would ordinarily because there are three roads to cross and so on. So there's always a cost involved as well. I think every school should be on a perpetual arts mark journey because if you've always got in the back of your mind, how is this going to expand our horizons? How is this going to provide better experiences from the children? If you are always on an arts mark journey, you are always looking for that, making it even better. What on the horizons? How can we involve children more? How can we, what experiences can we give them? So when they're 25 and they're looking back into their secondary education, they can say things like, I remember when we did. And most adults, when you ask them that question, will tell you about um, a musical experience that they've been in or perhaps a band that they formed while they were at school or maybe a piece of poetry which they can still remember because they had to perform it in front of the class group. Don't necessarily remember how they learnt what an isosceles triangle was or how they did addition or Pythagoras' theorem. They may know all of those things now, but they won't necessarily remember the learning about that, but they will remember the creative experiences. And they'll be able to say, do you remember children when they come back here now as adults, they've been left school 10, 15 years. That's how long I've been at this place. And they'll say things, oh, do you remember, do you remember when we were taken to Wales and we got fish and chips and the seagulls came and ate everything? Do you remember when we were allowed to put face packs on before we went to sleep at night as part of the winding down experiences? They remember those sorts of things. All of those lovely memories that people should have at school. Not of how many times they got told off or whether they did some misdemeanor that they ended up being resentful for their adult life over. Just everybody experiences school differently. But I'd like to make sure that if you're on an arts mark journey, the children will remember those lovely creative moments of school. And those are the memories that they're taking with them into adult life. And the experiences, things that they've learned that they can then do with their own children or just make their own la adult life more fulfilling. And, so, and particularly that, that ownership, if they are invited to be part of the the creation of those events and exactly, activities. Exactly, exactly. When, you, when you're saying to children, what is it that you would like to, what story do you want to tell here? What message do you want to give people? You know, you talk about climate change, for example, that's a perfect one. Um, we're going to do some work with World Pencil. 
and um, hopefully on the 6th of July when it's the Let's Create Day, that will be the culmination of our World Pencil project. And saying to the children, the issue is about climate change or sustainability and where do you want, what message do you want to give out? Wow, what a huge topic. So many different aspects of that, that the child can then go and research and investigate and come back saying, did you know? Wow, no I didn't. What are we going to do about that then? How are we going to how are we going to share that message out? What can what can we do so that other people can learn from something that you've just shared with this group here, something you've just taught us? So much more invested. <laughs> Life is so much easier as a teacher. That's why every school should be on an art smart journey all the time. It makes your job so much more fun. What has been the greatest success and biggest failure or challenge as part of an art smart journey? The biggest failure is not understanding the administration about it. So not taking as enough care to read everything that's expected because there's nothing more disappointing than thinking, oh, we haven't managed that quite properly. So the failure is in administration. That's because I've probably got a brain that goes doo -doo 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 all over the place like most pupils do. And I speed read things and don't look at the minutiae until I realise, oh, I've made a mistake there. So I now need to look at the minutiae in the colours. Art Smart Journey, so the biggest failure has been the disappointment of not getting the administration right all the time. Um, and that, for most of the people that sit in a head teacher's chair, they'd be really surprised about that because usually they're very, very good at meticulous attention to detail. Um, and so they, it would be easy for them, not so much for me perhaps. But anyway, um, the greatest success, oh blimey. I don't even know where to start with this because if you walk around my school you can see aspects of creativity all over the place. If in the outdoor learning area where there is a little storytelling um, plays around a fire pit or out in the playground where there is a story chair or a giant chair for children to sit on uh, learning through landscapes have, have worked beautifully with the school to help us to create that right next to the Willow Dome. Um, so children can sit and tell the story. So that's a great, tell their own story. That's a great success. Um, having children working with artists that come into Southampton and having their work influence the artist and then seeing what the artist has created on a billboard in Southampton, you just think, wow, that was, that was my children's work, that was our school, our community, and it's up there for the whole of Southampton to see. So there's been a million things. Well, the child that went to Mayflower Theatre, and so they went on stage at May Mayflower Theatre to see how all the props worked, and. Um, all the backstage things, the organisations that are going on, coming and saying, oh, I might be able to do that as a job. I found that, was, I found that really fascinating. You think, oh, is, is that the biggest success? The thing is, there's so many of them. It's really hard to say, oh, it was definitely that. Because it was definitely everything. What are the biggest, most obvious changes you've seen in your staff? since you started doing Arts Mark? A lot more teamwork. A lot more teamwork. Um, in a school like this, you need to be able to stand shoulder to shoulder. But this was, this was um, doing Arts Mark projects involving different departments allowed a lot more curriculum collaboration. Um, and that goes literally across every subject now. So I would say probably the biggest change, and it's small, little, subtle things that have happened over time. But if, if I say, well, let's, let's have a look at how we were in 2010 and how we are now in 2022, 
those small subtle changes as we've been on this art of Schmark journey as said probably the teamwork is our our greatest strength because it's not just about the social and emotional development of the children it's also about the intellectual development about the curriculum planning the academic achievement as well so yeah probably teamwork how important is your support and championing of the arts mark journey in ensuring that all of your teachers are on board and able to participate and it's, know they have a part in it it's absolutely critical for the head teacher to be completely behind this it won't work as well if you just ask a member of your senior leadership team to get involved because you can have the most fantastic member of the senior leadership ever but you need to know as well because the value in your conversations with young people as you walk around your school doing your ma management by patrol when you can say oh I noticed such and such so that the children the children know you as the leader of the school are invested in this you don't have to do all of the work yourself, but you do have to know about it. So I would say to anybody who is thinking about um, doing, going on an art smart journey, do that training yourself with whichever member of staff you've allocated to lead so that you know what's expected of them. You can make sure that it goes into their performance management. You can make sure that they've got enough time off the curriculum to be able to do it effectively. You can make sure that you can unlock the resources within the school that is required to make sure that the young people have the best ever experience. And you can't do that unless you know. So one day of your time, that all, that's all it'll take as the leader of the school. One day of your time, go and find out so that you can make sure it works really, really well in your school. If ArtSmart fails, it's because the leadership of it has failed. And that's down to you as the head teacher. How important would you say the support and guidance that you've been able to get from your local bridge organisation has been on your ArtSmart journey? They are a critical point of reference. Okay, They are the link between people, creatives in the community that might be able to make a project work for you. They are the, the checks and balances. Have we got this about right? What do you think might happen um, if we tried this project as opposed to this one? And so a point of reference and somebody locally is, is really useful because they will know, okay, in your locality, there is this organization that will be able to help you or there is this musician or this poet or this um, spray can artist who can come in and help you with and, and they can link you together so as a point of reference it's it's absolutely critical to have that infrastructure there uh, if we want our young people to to be able to think for themselves to problem solve to design and and, and live in a world that doesn't even exist yet we're going to have to be able to provide them with the tools to do that. So as a, as a leader of learning, I don't know the answer to all of those things. I need to be able to pick up a telephone or drop somebody an email and say, help me with this. How can I support my um, members of staff who are involved in this over this particular issue? And so I can pick up the telephone and somebody on the other end will know the answer. So it's absolutely critical for a point of reference to have a bridge organisation. Um, certainly it's worked very well for us in Southampton and it's, it's worked knowing about things um, that are available to the young people. A piece of creative writing and they can sit here and do their... Here we are on the throne with the crown. Once upon a time in the city of Southampton, there was a wonderful school called the Polygon, and it had in its walls the most creative and genuinely interesting children.